Before us, Galante, he's an advisor with Colossal Biosciences, the company which says it's working to de-extinct the dire wolf and other species as well. He's also a world-renowned wildlife biologist, TV host, and social media influencer. Forrest, great to see you today. I've been really looking forward to this. Thanks, Anna. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited about dire wolves. Can you bring my grandmother back to life, too? Uh, no, I personally can't do any of it, but it sounds great. All right, well, let's talk about this. First off, no question, this is quite an impressive scientific feat, and there's a lot of good this technology can do. So what are the practical implications here? How will this help conservation? Yeah, I think the big thing to look at about this technology is de-extinction can repair fragmented and damaged ecosystems by replacing animals that human beings have wrongfully driven towards extinction. Good examples are the thylacine from Australia, the dodo bird, and there are actually dozens and dozens more that human beings have directly caused their extinction. And being able to apply this technology to bring those animals back and eventually put those animals back into those ecosystems will literally repair damage that is unfathomable. Oh my gosh, they are just so cute. If you look at the video, they're and they make this like sweet little sound. Um, I'm thinking back to Jurassic Park and that scene where they take the DNA out of like a mosquito that's in sap or something. Let's back this up a little bit and rewind and tell us how this was even able to come into fruition. Yeah, so I'm not a geneticist, but what I do understand about the dire wolf de-extinction is that they extracted from specimens that were 13,000 years old and 72,000 year olds, and they made 20 gene edits across 14 different genes. 15 of which were directly from ancient DNA and basically plugged that into a gray wolf in order to uh, replicate the things that you're seeing here, like a long white coat, bigger ears, a larger size, cold adapted. And these are the things that make up genetically a dire wolf. So they've taken a, a gray wolf and turned it into something that represents a dire wolf that this animal will never be released back into the wild. It, that was never an intent for that. This was just to show a proof of concept. And alongside this, while this has taken place, Colossal Biosciences has actually also cloned blood cloning. Uh, unlike the amber from the mosquito, they've just drawn blood and they've cloned the critically endangered North American red wolf. There's only 20 of those left in the wild in the world. So this technology is already being applied to conservation of species that massively require it. So can we bring back the woolly mammoth too? I mean, like, and, and, and what would this look like? Um, you know, I, I spent six years in Australia and they're really concerned about biosecurity and you can't bring anything in um, that could compromise these really unique animals. And what, what would it do if we had, did have woolly mammoths and dire wolves roaming around the United States once again? Well, fortunately, I don't think dire wolves will ever be roaming around the U.S. once again, and they weren't a human-based extinction. Mammoths, however, are on the radar. And believe it or not, if we have mammoths roaming around again, they are going to compact the snow, they're going to knock down trees, and they're actually going to, it's been scientifically shown, cool the Arctic up to six degrees more and slow down the melting of the permafrost. So mammoths Ooh. are on the radar of one of the species that colossal is working to bring back and they actually have direct conservation implications as far as climate control and all kinds of other things because mammoths only died out a lot of people think they died out you know during the jurassic era they some mammoths only died out ten thousand years ago so mammoths were around until relatively recently and the loss of them has created a shift in those environments and so bringing them back could actually be a very beneficial thing to the environment that said it's an extremely slow process. It's not like tomorrow there's going to be a thousand mammoths up in Alaska. It's you make make a few, see how they do, put them in a controlled environment, study that. You know, it's a very very slow process. Okay, and and just we got to go, but real quick, what's the life going to be like for? I think they have little names too, Romulus and Ramesi or something. What's their life going to be like? Uh, right now, they are in an incredible facility, a private facility with huge paddocks and acres, and they are being kept as though they were in sort of a zoo or a rescue center. As you can see, they have these big areas where they can play in the snow, they can roam around outside. These guys will not be, as far as I'm aware, on display or going anywhere the public can interact with them. They just get to have a very peaceful yeah. life. Very cool. Such an interesting story. I'm excited to have you on the show. I'm sure this is going to go bananas online when we post it there too. Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.